Well, welcome back. And uh, here we are, sanding the, uh, the main body, continuing. Uh, this is, of course, the pattern, the center section of the entire race car. And you see I'm sanding it here using a long block to try and keep things even and true. Obviously, the longer the sanding block, the less likely you are to get uh, ununiform um, pits and dips. So, I'll just use a small one for the small touch-ups. I only use the long one to keep things accurate. So what we're doing here is um, I'm using a guide coat which is a black cheap spray paint just to spray the filler and then you sand and then you hit up the, uh, the black is left behind identifying the low spots and then we uh, mix some Bondo car filler and fill up the low spots and uh, keep sanding until we eventually get it nice and smooth and even. And here I am applying some car filler to those low spots and just uh, they're easily identifiable by the, uh, the black paint that's left behind on the guide coat which uh, clearly shows where it's low. So I'll just go through the whole bodywork here and concentrate on those low spots and uh, continue sanding until they're, they're all gone. My body language here pretty much says that oh, I'm looking pretty disillusioned and tired. You're doing hours and hours of, of this rubbing. It's uh, it can get you down, but you just got to focus on the end on the end game and just keep at it. Eventually, you'll you'll get the desired result. But it is a lot of work, a lot of work. And using your hand here just to feel for the low spots, you'd be surprised how sensitive your touch is. You can generally feel low spots and, uh, and identify them. Once it feels smooth under hand, you're pretty much there. Again, feeling for those spots. Any dips, crevices, undulations, you can pick them up. You can pick them up with, quite easily with you by rubbing your hand. So I'll blow all the dust off now and um, get it ready for a coat of uh, primer. I'm just using some brake cleaner here to uh, get the final dust particles off it, give it a nice good rub down. The undercoat's not that critical, it's still a long way to go, but just looking for any large bits of debris or dust, just get rid of it so I get good adhesion on the primer. Get some talcum powder on your hands, is very handy. Let's you get the uh, surgical gloves on quite easily. Uh, and the talcum powder just takes any moisture off your hands, which makes it difficult to get them on. So I put the uh, Sundrum carbon spray mask on, so we don't get any of the 2K primer in our lungs. And, um, get the spray gun ready. It's a low pressure spray gun de Vilbus. It's a nice gun actually. I've been using it for all my projects and uh, putting a nice coat of undercoat here. I'll put about two or three layers on, get it, build it up nice and thick. It's actually a primer filler 
and um, I put a nice two or three thick coats of that on and then uh, we're getting pretty close then we can rub down and start to really hone in on the finish, the final finish. Pretty nice even cut on this is of course 2k primer so it's a high build you know, two pack system and just putting it on nice and even but as thick as I can get it on there it's a, it is a filler and I'll use a diagonal pattern longitudinal patterns to get good coverage you see they're going backwards and forwards crisscrossing You see there's lots of, lots of dust building up in the room but uh, I do actually have an, a, a large fan, evacuation fan, vacuum fan in the corner and it clears the dust out, the overspray out very quickly. Uh, the room's also heated, there's a gas heater in the other corner so I've got gas heat coming in from one end and um, a, uh, an extraction fan at the other, you can hear it there and uh, it gets rid of the overspray very quickly. Alright, so now we've got the body out of the spray booth and uh, giving it a bit, I've already given it a good rub down. It's pretty close and now we're starting on the side pods, you can see them there. These are made out of wood, some MDF and um, I made a drawing for them and uh, you can see there the, uh, the basic shape. One of the nice things about these early Turbo Era 80s cars was they were fairly basic geometry, not like the modern cars today. So you can see flat, flat sides with some radiuses and can all be made out of sheet. And then here you can see I've got the screwed the side panel on which I'll sand down and put a radius on the corners. The screws will be removed. Well as you can see behind me I've put this uh, first side pod on here. I've got the main fuselage or the sound part of the body pretty much right. Good little bits and pieces but pretty much done so I thought I'd start on the side pod. The side pod's pretty much built up out of MDF and uh, some formers in there to give it its shape. The idea is that that side pod's going to come off and allow me to mould the centre section for the tub and then put the side pod back on and then mould the engine cover and the side pod and the part of the side pod that's attached to the engine cover can be moulded separately. It gives The side pod being removable gives me the option of, um, you know, of, of being able to mould the side pod with or without the the, uh, the main body. I've pretty much got it nutted out how I'm going to fence and uh, make all my segments for my moulds. That's the basic body work. That side pod there uh, hasn't got all the radius on the corners and the edges done yet, but there is enough wood behind there or MDF behind there to allow me to get some nice radiuses on it. It's, uh, the edges are a little too sharp at the moment, but the, as I said, I can I can round them off at the end. So what I'm going to do now is um, fill all the, the screw holes and um, you know start to get it tidy. I'll then probably take it off the the body and onto the bench and sand it separately, so I can really get into it. The bottom needs to be leveled off a little bit too. Anyway, I'll pull this camera off here and we'll see if we can't not switch it off. Yeah, so let's take a, a quick look around. You'll see what I've done here. Uh, there's the side pod. You can see from the side view, she's starting to look like a Grand Prix car now. Well, I can see it. I can see it anyway. Yeah, that's the correct profile. And when the roll hoops on the when the roll hoops on the on the headrest there and and everything, that'll look good. Now I've actually taken the side pod back further than it needs to because I'll what I'll do is I'll cut the piece area that I don't need around the wishbones. You can see on the Williams there how it sort of cuts off around the wishbone there. Yeah, mine actually extends back because I'm not exactly 100% sure where that's going to happen so I've got more material uh, than I need so that'll give me plenty of uh, 
plenty of uh, material to trim. So there you go, as I said earlier, still got to put the radiuses on all these corners here. And all this and this. Of course the front is blanked off, I'll cut a hole out of the, uh, the finished pod and um, appropriately radius the leading edges and whatnot. Much easier to mould when it's solid. Um, there is actually going to be the interior ductwork inside there for the radiator and the intercooler respectively. And you can see there, it's just an open box. And the idea is it's, uh, it's got screws along the, the top here. You can see them there. And once I undo those screws and undo the tabs, there's actually tabs underneath the body. I can slide that off and uh, work on it separately and mold the areas I need to separately. Now you'll see the other side. I haven't even started on that yet, but that'll be next. And I'll meet it right up to the corner here. So my fiberglass mold will come all, cover all that. And as I said before, I can trim what I don't need off. So she's looking pretty good. There you go. Still need to add a little bit more radius to all these corners here. I'll do all that last when I really concentrate on exactly how that needs to look. Um, also the cockpit opening, you see it's all jagged here. That doesn't matter because when I take my mould there'll be a perfectly made line. There's actually more body there than it needs to be. So when I make my mould, the cockpit opening will actually be reshaped to the proper, proper dimension and there'll be a fence there that I'll mould up to. It'll all make sense later on. She's going to be a bit of a mould. So I'm going to be, have to really think about how I'm going to segment this. About this area here, there's going to be a nose cone parting line as well. So that actually, that front nose won't be a part of the tub. It'll be moulded in the, uh, the tub, but it'll actually be a separate, separate, there'll be a division there so I can mould it separately and put the front wing on and all that sort of stuff. There you go. All right, keep plowing on.